In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to build a RESTful API using AWS services. We'll be using AWS Lambda for our serverless compute API gateway for managing our APIs, DynamoDB to manage our database. Throughout the video, I'll be guiding you guys step by step so you can understand how you can build your own API in the cloud. Make sure you watch this video to the end. I'll be showing you guys the best practices when building your API on AWS. Before we do anything at all, let's take a few minutes to think about the AWS infrastructure for this application. So we have the front end of the application, which is referred to as the client in this case. We want our client to send or make a request to an API somewhere. And that's why we're going to use API Gateway. And once it gets the request, it's going to talk to another AWS service, which is called AWS Lambda. What it's going to do is handle the business logic for the API. So you can think of it as a middleman between our API and our database. And the database we are going to be using is DynamoDB. Once DynamoDB gets the query from our Lambda function, it's going to process that information and send it back to the Lambda function. And once that Lambda function gets the information, it's going to send it as a JSON back to our API gateway. Once the API gateway processes the information and sees that we have the necessary roles and permission, it's going to send it back to the client. And that's when we, as the front-end developers, can display it in our application. I hope that makes sense. Let's now jump into our AWS console so we can start creating our roles and setting our permissions. Okay, so now we're in the console. You guys just make sure you have an AWS account. So in the console, let's search for IAM. Want to go to the policies page. Let's create a new policy. In the specified permissions page, just click on JSON. Now we can add our policy as a JSON object. You can find all the code in the description. I'm just going to paste the code from the link. So now our policies would have least privileges. These are just policies that allows AWS to know which resources the application would be able to access. As that's done, let's click on next. And now we have to review our policy before we create it. So let's give our policy a name give it a description. You can see we have our policies created for us for DynamoDB and CloudWatch. Click on Create Policy. Once that's done, on the sidebar, click on Roles. And now we're going to create a new role. So click on Create Role. In the Select Trusted Entity page, select AWS Services. And under Use Case, open up the dropdown and select Lambda from the list. Click on next. And now we have to attach our permissions to this role. So in the search bar, let's search for our policy. We call this one, my Lambda policy. So select it and click next. Let's give our role a name. I would call this my Lambda role. And you can see we have our policies already set up for this role. Finally, click create role. So now we've created our policies and we've attached it to a new role. Next, it's time for us to start building our Lambda function. So let's search for Lambda in the search box and open it up in a new tab. In the Lambda's functions page, let's click on create function. We want to author our Lambda function from scratch. And under basic information, let's give our Lambda a name. We can call this my Lambda Dynamo DB. And for the runtime, Let's select Node.js 20. Now we need to change the default execution role. Select use an existing role. And now we can select the role that we just created, which is called my Lambda role. And then click create function. We have a Lambda function called my Lambda function Dynamo DB. So if you scroll down to where it says the code tab, this is where you can upload your Lambda function to and test your Lambda function from. So let's go into VS Code and write our Lambda function. In VS Code, we just need to create an index.mjs file. 
the mjs just means you want your js file to be a module we're going to import our aws sdk but we want dynamodb's document client library now we can import aws dynamodb client create a new instance of the dynamodb client we're going to set a region. Make sure the region for your DynamoDB is the same region for your Lambda function. Now we can make this new instance work for us by calling the from method from the document client library. And then we pass in our document client into it. Now we can start writing our Lambda function. The first thing we're going to do is export a handler function, which is going to be a synchronous. The event object will be coming from API gateway. And in this Lambda function, we're going to create a variable to track all the operations that will be passed into this Lambda function via API Gateway. And once we have this variable, we can then run checks. So let's create a case for create. And we're going to await the put command. So let's import that. And import all the commands we are going to be using for this API. We're also going to send in a payload and you pass that in to our put command. And then we can return a message just to let us know it's been successfully created. We can repeat the same process for the read operation, except we're just going to use the get command. And now we can simply return the data we got from DynamoDB. Let's do the same for the search operation, which sends a query command we can basically do the same thing for update and delete operations. Finally, our default operation, which will just let you know that the operation does not exist. Let's add an echo operation. And if it's an echo operation, then it returns this payload. If it's not the echo operation, run the other checks. But we're not finished yet. Every query made to DynamoDB requires a table name. And this is going to be an environment variable. Create the variable. We are going to be adding the environment variables in our Lambda console. Let's wrap all this code in a try catch block so we can handle errors. Let's copy the code from our code editor into the editor in the Lambda console and then click deploy. Once our Lambda has been deployed, we can click on configurations and then environment variable. We're going to give our environment variable a name. Just make sure the key is the same key that you used in your Lambda function. For the value, we're going to make sure it is the same table name used in our DynamoDB. So let's save it. And now we have our environment variable set up for us. Now it's time for us to build our API with API Gateway. From the AWS console, let's search for API Gateway and open it in a new tab. Click on Create API. And from the list here, select REST API. Click on Build. Let's give our API a name. Let's add a description. And from the drop down, make sure it's set to Regional. And then click Create API. Now we have an API created. Click on Create Resources. And in the Create Resources page, let's give our resource a name. And click Create Resource. Now we have our resource as slash my lambda dash API. Next, click on create method. Select the post method from the drop down list. We're going to use the lambda function, so leave the lambda function selected. And for the lambda function, the region is the same region. Now we can just select our lambda function, leave the settings as default, and click on create method. Once that's done, we can go to the resources page and click on test. And we can just paste in our test from the GitHub repo. Click on test. And you can see it's a successful operation. We are getting our echo data back. Now let's deploy the API. So click on deploy API. And we're going to name this the development stage. So I'll say dev and I'll just give it a description and click deploy. Once the code has been successfully deployed, API Gateway provides an invoke URL. So let's copy that invoke URL. So we can use this invoke URL from a front-end application. So let's go to VS Code. I'll paste in the URL here. 
don't forget to include the environment as dev and the name of the resource we created. Make sure it's a post request. Click on the body tab and paste in our JSON, then click on send. And you can see we have a successful request with a status code of 200. Next, let's create our DynamoDB. So open up DynamoDB in the AWS console. Click on create table. We're going to create a table by giving our table a table name. Make sure the table name is the same table name we used in our Lambda function. Next, let's add a partition key. We'll just call this an ID. A partition key is just a unique ID to identify each item in our table. And then click on create table. This would create our table. So just give it a few seconds. And once our table has been created, you can start using it to make queries or scan operations from the Lambda function. From the table dashboard, click on explore table items and you can see there's no item in our database. With that done, we can test our API. We can copy paste the create operation and if it is successful, it will be added to DynamoDB. If we repeat this process again, all the items would be added to our DynamoDB table. Because we are making a post request, our read operation becomes more secure and resilient. We can also update the database from the client. And of course, we can delete that same information from the client through our REST API. I think it's best we delete everything we've built so AWS doesn't give you a high bill. Let's go back into our Lambda function page and select our Lambda function. Click on Actions from the drop down, select Delete. And type in Delete and click Delete. We can then go to IAM, click on Roles, and we're going to look for our Lambda role. So my Lambda role, select it and click Delete. Type in the name of this role and click Delete. Cool. Next, let's go to API Gateway, select the API and click Delete. Type Confirm and click Delete again. Let's go to our DynamoDB, select our table name, click on Delete and type in Confirm, then click on Delete to confirm. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give this video a like and also please subscribe. It really helps this channel out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.